All right, it's time for ReZero, Season 2, Episode 6, Cut Content and Changes. Who was behind the attack on the mansion? Well, obviously it's Elsa, and now it's looking like that melee girl is the purple-haired girl that disappeared in Arc 2. That was the mystery of who broke the barrier, but who hired Elsa? I still want to believe Roswell, but maybe in Arc 1, Roswell didn't hire Elsa, and Roswell did hire Elsa in Arc 4. I don't know. I feel like at the end of the day, Roswell's there, but due to my Roswell theory of not knowing Subaru at the time of Arc 1, unless he did summon, like, that's a logical inconsistency. But right now, I, I do believe it's Roswell. There's no one else with this kind of insider information of who even lives at the mansion, the specific even timing given. It's, it has to be him. Episode 31 served to build up a lot of the mystery behind who's involved in what. So, as we go through what didn't make it into the anime, we'll get to see more context behind Frederica's manipulation and even the attack on the mansion. A lot of which brings with it a bunch of revelations with regards to who the potential culprits could be, including a fairly surprising explanation for the sudden appearance of this demon beast. But that's content that was supposed to be shown more towards the end of the episode. Before we get to that point, let's first take a look at the details we missed along the way. Okay. Episode 31, The Girl's Gospel. Covering chapter one in The girl's gospel? I thought it was the maiden's gospel. Same shit, but whose gospel are we talking about? A gospel is a very specific word. What girl? A kidness gospel? Biko's gospel? Ram's gospel? Frederica's gospel? Petra's gospel? In chapter two of volume 11 of the light novel, it's in the very first lines that we're given a vivid description of what it's like to return by death. It hurts. Just as we visually see in the anime, there's no lag between death and resurrection. There is also the Shadow Realm, Shadow Garden, Dark Ethereal Realm that Satala sometimes visits Subaru and they have like a conversation. Sometimes it happens during these deaths. There was no brief pause or short moment of nothingness during his transition from one loop to the next. He perceived the entire thing as one continuous moment, as if time itself was remaining constant throughout the entire experience. Hmm. He was well aware that his life was ending every time, but the way his mind recognized it as if it was all just one long, ongoing series of events was really what bothered him the most. It this didn't matter how many times he would go through the process. The reality of it all was just something that he would never be able to accept as the new normal. In the end, his mind would always have to take a few moments to catch back up to reality. Yeah, for sure, when he gets up, but like... I thought that at a certain point, Subaru becomes so numb to dying that like he will no longer be so triggered by it. Now, we're still early in to the show, right? This is only arc four. Two months have passed, roughly, not including all the different loops. But I thought that with the way that the show is going, as Subaru experiences more and more deaths, like you're literally going to become numb to it to the point where you start abusing the power. That... I don't know, Tape has done a great job in balancing Return by Death by having people be suspicious of him if he ever mentions details that he shouldn't know about, right? In arc one, in, in the first arc one, two, three. Later on, because he subjugated the White Whale, other people were willing to listen to his random fucking details of when the cult would be attacking because, again, of his heroic deeds. But another thing is about how he feels so scared and he's so traumatized from the repeated regression that he doesn't want to die, right? He's not just abusing the power, so that's like a very creative way to, and a very realistic way to balance this power, but no matter what, wouldn't you become numb to it at a certain point? The more you do it over and over, even no matter how traumatic the experiences are, wouldn't you just literally just become so numb to it? The reality of it all was just something that he would never be able to accept as the new normal. In the end, his mind would always have to take a few moments to catch back up to reality. Anyway. Last episode, Subaru's conversation with Garfield had led him to realize a different perspective to Amelia's situation. One where perhaps the trial was something she actually didn't want to do at all. And we should clear for it her. It was for this reason that he decided to approach the post-trial conversation in a different manner. During the previous loop, Otto had asked how Subaru was able to come out of the trial unscathed. It was a question that Subaru was able to previously avoid without having to give a proper answer. But now we're actually At answering. At the time, he didn't want to add any more unnecessary stress or pressure onto Amelia. But this time he decided to tell the truth. Yeah, this time he said, yeah, I cleared this shit. Amelia, can I do it for you? And Amelia was like, oh, you think I'm useless? And I was like, uh-oh. And something is weird about Garfield. Because never has there ever been a moment where other characters kind of acted differently. 
during these regressions. Usually there's a consistency to how they all act, and we can kind of work around that. But Garfield's bipolar as fuck. He was totally fine with Amelia being bailed out by Subaru last time, but this time not really. Maybe because Garfield didn't really witness Amelia suffering and trembling like the last run? I don't know. He wanted to see if Amelia was in fact subconsciously calling out to him for help. To see if the only thing stopping her from asking was the notion that he would have to go through a harrowing experience similar to hers. If that was in fact the case, then Subaru wanted her to know that it was okay. It was exactly what he signed up to do. But before he could say anything else, both Garfield and Ryuzu chimed in to say that it had to be Amelia. Yep. Unlike in the anime, they straight up told Amelia that it was all part of Roswell's plan. It oh. was only after hearing these words that Amelia- Oh. Well, I mean, that's pretty heavily implied, but the anime never directly specified it. They, they just kind of said how, you know, we can't really clear this shit because at the end of the day, this whole domain is under the Mather's family's jurisdiction and whatever he says goes, so, you know, you gotta do it. Amelia finally committed herself to the task. They stirred various emotions that led her to realize that this was all part of the path that she needed to take in order to become the next ruler. Yes. The way she saw it. If she can't overcome this, she cannot be ruler. She needs to build the confidence up from overcoming these trials and to gain also the favor of the villagers. If Subaru clears it, what are we doing here? Making Subaru the queen king? No, the monarch is supposed to be Amelia. She needs to be able to overcome these challenges. If she couldn't even do something as simple as face her own past, then how could she ever hope to face the future as the Gunica's leader? But it's not that simple. Because the pre-Frozen Bond memories must be actually fucking nightmares, because Frozen Bond itself was already a nightmare. Despite knowing that that's how Amelia felt, Subaru still insisted that he was simply the better person to take on the trials. He basically told Amelia that he was the one most suited to the job. But Amelia felt now more than ever that she shouldn't have to rely on Subaru for everything. She was of the mindset that if she did, then that would essentially be the same thing as running away from her problems. It is. The thing is, Subaru saw absolutely nothing wrong with this. Hmm. He really wanted to respond by saying that nothing was wrong with running away. Is there nothing wrong with running away? Is it really? I think there's a lot of things wrong with running away. Even in episode 18, Subaru's... Wanted to run away with Rem, and Rem was like, don't run away. Come on, we can do this, don't give up. Hmm. To him, it really wasn't all that bad of an option. He was personally of the mindset that if he could avoid a whole lot of suffering by taking a different path, then I mean, that was true. the path that he'd want to be on. Like, for sure, like, I, I get what he's saying, but for the overall goal of making Amelia ruler, she cannot run away from this. Some things must be face forward, and she needs to confront her past. Even if it was the path of a weaklings, he saw nothing wrong with trying to avoid the problem. Yeah, I mean, again, that's the mentality shaped by the 17 years of neatness. I mean, it's how he's lived his life up until now. Exactly. So it makes sense that that way of thinking would seem completely normal to him. Yep. But no matter how much sense it made to him, these were words that he just couldn't bring himself to say to Amelia. It was as if he was now able to recognize the faults with this mentality. Oh. In any case, the heated decision. Remember, right? The whole scene here with Rem, episode 18. Let's run away together. No, Subaru, don't run away. You're my hero. Amelia losing consciousness. Rem had given her a bit of incense to help her relax. Although- That was fucked up, though. Putting a hot cup by your face and scalding it, that is kind of fucked up, Rem. Although it was a method that Subaru found to be a bit forceful, he wasn't really upset since he felt it was something that Amelia needed. This abnormal acceptance of Ram's behavior induced a little bit of surprise from her. With the way Subaru had recently been acting, it was as if he had inherited Puck's guardianship over Amelia. I mean, kind of, right? Puck pretty much said, hey, take care of Amelia. So what is Puck doing right? Why is he gone? Maybe it has to do with Echidna. Because like, we know that Puck made an, an oath with Echidna, right? And he gets punished if he interferes too much. And the proximity to Miss Kidna in the sanctuary is what's making Puck not in interfere? I, I I don't know. Puck literally just disappeared at the beginning of the season, told Subaru to do something. Sometimes Puck just disappears for a couple days. Maybe this has to do with the oath. Maybe it has again. May maybe there's like a fucking bar, remember? There's like a bar, a meter of like interference bar. The, the more closer you become to maxing it out, the more likely you're going to lose the memories and like, you know, get punished like a kid this oath states in the beginning of Frozen Bond. Or... Puck just straight up has something important to do? I don't know. Puck just disappears sometimes. Maybe he's doing something really important. Puck is a spirit. 
But a spirit is not a soul. It's not like the soul cannot enter the sanctuary, right? I, I, I don't think so. I, I think Puck is in the crystal. I don't know, actually. I'm assuming Puck is in the crystal. He's just not coming out. For what reason? For Amelia to fucking overcome this by herself? The oath preventing Puck from interfering? I don't know. I mean, it's been pretty obvious that Subaru had been acting more protective than usual. Even Amelia could sense his more abrasive behavior. I just realized something really funny. This whole season started off with Rem going away and Subaru losing his most fundamental pillar of su support and Amelia being there for him and saying, we can do this together. What the fuck, bitch? Everything got reversed. You're supposed to take care of me. This, now we're taking care of you. You were supposed to be the one to fill in Rem's support and you were all like, I'll be there for you. We could do this together. Let's share our burdens. I'll be the fucking man and protect. And now it's just like, oh, I can't do anything. We gotta be... It, it switched so quick. But even if that wasn't his intent, Subaru couldn't deny that their observations were correct. If even Ram was calling him out for being more rash than usual, then perhaps he needed to reconsider his stance on the whole situation. Anyway, it was after this that Subaru had a conversation with Garfield and Ryuzu. But okay. what the anime didn't show after was the following conversation with Otto and Ram. Oh? You see, Otto had been eavesdropping the entire time. <laughs> when Subaru noticed this, rather than scold him for listening in, Subaru instead wanted to know his opinion. He wanted to know how an outsider like Otto perceived the current events. What do you think, Otto? Naturally, he sided with Garfield and Ryuzu. To him, not wanting to get on Roswell's bad side made perfect sense. Yeah, and that conversation with Roswell still hasn't happened. What are they saving this up for? Otto needs to talk to Roswell. He doesn't get any chances. Subaru gets to talk to Roswell a lot recently. I love those Subaru and Roswell scenes. Those dialogues are so fucking intense with the maniacal clown soundtrack playing in the background. When is Otto going to have his time to shine? I mean, he was the lord of their land after all. Plus, if Amelia truly was supposed to gain all the prestige that came with overcoming the trial, then that was something that just wasn't possible if Subaru was to do it in her True. place. Would everyone else really accept it as Amelia's own accomplishment? Like, my understanding of the break time in the beginning of Season 2 of the Otto versus multiple Roswells, right? Otto's pride versus multiple Roswells. They seem to, I don't know, I think they're hinting at something. Maybe Otto will actually face off against Roswell, not in a battle, but different ways, multiple times in different loops, and that's why it's the multiple Roswells, and the pride of Otto implying that, like, he gained confidence and is, quote-unquote, acting a little bit more arrogant. Honestly, he's never acting arrogant. He's a fucking doormat, but he stands up for himself? I'm not sure, but they could be suggesting that, like, Otto will stand up for himself and face against Roswell in conversations, in multiple loops, is what I'm... Going to guess based on break time hinting. Accomplishment if Subaru was the one to do all the work. That's what Otto was trying to convey. Shortly after this, Ram then chimed in to ask if it was really possible for Amelia to beat the trial. Subaru didn't say <laughs> that it know. was possible, but it was something that could potentially end up taking a very long time. Yep. Time which he really didn't have to spare. What was surprising was that Ram actually agreed that this matter should- And you know what? I was asking myself last episode, why would Roswell hire Elsa to send to the fucking mansion? Now, it seems like Roswell, because the details, the information, the script that Elsa received was way too intricate. It's got to be someone from the inside giving her these details. Therefore, I think it is Elsa, Roswell, right? It's too, it's too convenient. But beyond that, this time thing. Roswell has intentionally created a time constraint such that... If you don't clear this shit before Elsa kills you, then you fuck up. Because this ensures that Subaru will now act and like make it happen quicker. You know what I'm saying? If Elsa going to the mansion and killing Petra and Frederica and Rem was not a threat, they have all the time in the world to clear this shit. By Roswell hiring Elsa, it creates a necessity for Subaru to figure it out faster. Is that what he's doing? Taking a very long time. Time which he really didn't have to spare. I think so. Surprised. Like, this whole time example is like, sometimes Anony just says shit from the passage in the light novel that directly just like triggers me. I'm like, time. You're right. Time constraint. We can take all the time. Russell probably doesn't want to take all the time. Hire Elsa. Make it clear faster. It's gotta be. A long time. Time which he really didn't have to spare. 
What was surprising was that Ram actually agreed that this matter should be resolved quickly. Okay. She personally wanted everything to be finished before the royal selection concluded in about three years. <laughs> Ram actually assumed that this could potentially take over three years. We could be stuck here for three plus years. Amelia-sama, please! Now, this was a much longer estimate than what Subaru had in mind, but it did make him reconsider the possibility that perhaps Ram could be correct. No one knew for sure how long it would take Amelia to complete her trials. Oh god. But if Ram was able to say that it could take more than three I kind of get why people are upset with this season of ReZero. Season 1, I think, is definitely going to entertain the lowest hanging fruit anime watchers that are there not really for the deep lore and the world building but more of super suffering and the hype fights right this season amelia stalling it's not entertaining in their eyes now to me i don't care because i just care about what roswell's doing if you give me a roswell conversation with subaru that episode's already a 10 out of 10 for me because i have a bias for roswell but i can definitely understand why people think that reason season 2 is worse it does feel definitely considerably slower compared to season 1 but again I have my biases towards Roswell's secrets because that's what I've been just fucking <laughs> craving since season one. Three years was such a serious expression, then that was something that couldn't be ruled out as a possibility. However, there were also additional factors that needed to be taken into consideration. You see, Otto understood the other side of the argument as well. Mm. Waiting an extended period of time for Amelia could also lead to some other unwanted issues. Like what? There was no way that the villagers and the people of Sanctuary could live together for such a long period of time. Yeah, they're feeding us three meals a day and a nap. People look like they're just in poverty here. Where are we getting all these resources and food from? There's no way they can manage this for three years. The longer the villagers stayed in Sanctuary, the more dissatisfactory the living conditions would become for everyone. Yeah. There simply wasn't enough resources to go around. So Otto felt that the issue should try to be resolved at least before any type of revolt or unrest could occur. This meant having to renegotiate the release of the villagers. But because this was something that only happened last time due to Subaru's promise of taking the trial in Amelia's place, Subaru wasn't so sure that that would happen again. This time Ram really clutched for us to convince Garfield. Especially since he was now forbidden from taking the trials. It was after this that Subaru had his scheduled appointment with Roswell. The one where he had to discuss all his accomplishments from back at the capital. Oh boy. It was towards the end of Subaru's explanation that Roswell posed a rather odd question. Hmm? He wanted to know what happened to Wilhelm during the whale hunt. What? When Subaru said that Wilhelm was the one who slayed it, Roswell gave a slightly conflicted expression. Why? What? What does this mean? What? Roswell wanted to know the details of who actually slayed the whale subjugation. Did he hope that Subaru would have been the one to do it? But instead, because it's Wilhelm, he's like, fuck, we can't take credit? I'm not sure, but that's very interesting. He tried to make it seem as if he was happy for Wilhelm's success. Cap. But there was a little bit of discomfort that could be sensed from his words. Cap. Although Roswell had never met Wilhelm face to face, he was someone that was acquainted with one of his ancestors. Oh? Supposedly it was for that reason that Roswell was interested. Roswell is acquainted with one of Wilhelm's ancestors. What the fuck is Roswell? Because Wilhelm's like 70 years old. What? You're older? Yeah. I mean, I just assume that you're a human. I, I always just assume that they're just humans. If they got pointy ears, elf, half-elf, and then there's like demi-humans, which are more like beast people. But like, whoa, 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 hold the fuck up. Sounded like Roswell's way fucking older. New Von Austria ancestors before- Wilhelm's like a child to him. What are you, Roswell? Face to face. He oh, other way around? Wait, 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 am I, am I misunderstanding this? Hold up. Face slightly conflicted expression. He tried to make it seem as if he was happy for Wilhelm's success. I think I misunderstood but that. But there was a little bit of discomfort that could be sensed from his words. Although Roswell had never met Wilhelm face to face, yes. he was someone that was acquainted with one of his ancestors. He was someone that was acquainted with his ancestors. Like, if you say that, right after saying, although Roswell wasn't acquainted with Wilhelm's, it, it makes it sound like it's from Roswell to Wilhelm. You know what I mean? Basic English comprehension would make anyone assume that this is from Roswell to Wilhelm rather than the other way around. 
Supposedly, it was for that reason that Roswell was interested. Regardless of whether- Okay, okay, so basically, it's- 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 Wilhelm knew Roswell's ancestors. Wilhelm knew. Roswell is younger. Wilhelm is older. Roswell still is a human to me then. Okay, okay. But that was really true or not. The fact remained that this was a very weird instance of behavior. One that Subaru felt that he should take note of. Okay. Everything after this up to the point where Subaru- Whoa, 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 still, th 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 this part is kind of crazy though. So, Wilhelm knew of Roswell's ancestors. Wilhelm and Roswell has never met. Wilhelm slayed the whale. Roswell did not like that. Because he hoped that maybe someone else would do it from his own side. Like Rem or Subaru so that we can take credit is the only... That's, that's the only conclusion that can come to at this point. Why would he be upset that Wilhelm got the credit rather than someone else? I don't know. I don't know. Everything after this up to the point where Subaru arrives at the mansion are pretty much the same. There were a few moments where Otto was mentioned though. A couple of- By the way, at this time of Kingdom of Lugunica, is, is Wilhelm the strongest soldier? No, no, no. Reinhard is, right? Yeah, yeah, Reinhard exists. What am I thinking about? But right now, Reinhardt is the strongest soldier for Lugunica. Roswell's the strongest mage. I'm, I'm just trying to think of like super important like power scaling characters because like we're getting more stuff like, oh, the Valachian Empire had their one of their like one of their national heroes with the eight arms slayed by Regulus and shit like that. Reinhardt and Julius. I think Marcos is second, right? Reinhardt is stronger than Marcos and Marcos is stronger than Julius, right? Is Julius stronger than Marcos? Is this lore accurate? Part of me wants Marcos to be stronger because Marcos is seemingly an NPC looking character. Just because he does not look like a handsome isekai character. That's why I want him to be just a giga chat and just fucking thug it out. But... <sighs> Interesting stuff, I don't know. All of miscellaneous scenes that go to continue the running gag of him just being this random character that's typically used as a metaphorical punching bag for all the other characters. Super Otto does seem like that. I don't know what the fuck Otto's doing. Otto's just writing his fucking diaries. It's just making him break time. Otto has not done anything. I'm curious. What, what, what is Otto's fucking role gonna be in this arc? The dude can like talk to creature, living creatures and shit. Like and trees and shit. Like what are you doing? Subaru did however wonder what Otto was doing to pass the time. He wasn't really assigned any particular job while in Sanctuary. So no one really knew what his day to day looked like there. Only after Petra asked what Otto was up to did Subaru realize that he couldn't really refer to anything specific. He was always just seen as this random merchant who happened to accompany everyone else to Sanctuary. Yeah. Aside from that though, there wasn't really much more thought given to this since Otto never really remains a topic of conversation for very long. What is he so up to? after entering the mansion and visiting Rem... I don't know, like, Otto... Otto just might be the key to solving Amelia's trial. Random guess. Because they brought this character here and he's not doing fucking anything. They're saving him for something. I don't know exactly what. But surely it's gonna be important if they just benched him for the, like, the last couple episodes. He's, he hasn't even talked to Roswell yet. What is he doing? Subaru would then come across Frederica. It wasn't the best idea to go off alone with the person he- Otto is a secret envoy sent by Priscilla to take down Amelia. Yep. Priscilla paid Regulus to show up along with Gluttony to take down Crucia as well. No, Anastasia did that with money. Anastasia. Said, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Conspiracy theories. They're taking care of their competition. Yeah, <laughs> probably not, but hmm. He suspected to be betraying them. But he also didn't want to interrupt the intimate moment that Ram was having. Besides, he was pretty confident that there wouldn't be any emergency. At least, not with Frederica. I mean, both Roswell and Ram were able to confidently say that Frederica would never willingly put anyone in danger. Hmm. So, Subaru took a leap of faith with those words and went to the reception room to discuss the matters that he wanted to. He didn't even drink this tea. He was so quick to drink Echidna's tea, but Frederica, he, he was more sussed out of Frederica than Echidna, bro. The first thing we learn about are the details of her vow. The one thing that's preventing her from telling him- I just fucking hate how they just keep changing the words. The subs that I'm reading, oh, you have an oath that you can't do, right? But it's now a vow, and then there's a fucking pact, and there's a contract and a covenant. 
I'm just basically thinking that a Pact and a Vow is the same shit. Pact, Vow, Vow, Oath are the same shit. They, they just get thrown interchangeably. A contract is specific, right? That's what spirits. A covenant would, is specifically for the dragon. But this Vow, Pact, Oath seems to not really matter. It just gets thrown around loosely over and over again. The entire truth. Unlike a pact or a covenant. Oh my god, okay. A pact is different. So an oath and a vow is the same shit then. The vow that Frederica was abiding by held no compulsory power over her. She could very easily tell Subaru what it is he wanted to hear with zero repercussions. Bitch, why are you hiding a secret then? You're making us force you to do something. The reason that she chooses not to is because it's what she decided to do. Okay. It was for personal reasons alone that she cannot break this vow. Be well, personal reasons. Who knows? Still gonna assume that the vow is made with Roswell, and maybe Garfield's in danger. Maybe Roswell said, like, I'll kill Garfield if you fucking break this vow. That makes sense, right? To protect her little brother, something as urgent as that. I could understand that for selfish desires. At least that's what she was telling Subaru, anyway. Even so, a covenant is tied by blood? Exactly. That's why I believe the dragon fucking killed out the royal family, bro. 100%, the dragon straight out wiped out the Lugurica family with some sort of fucking virus. I don't know how the dragon would do it, but that he did it, bro. Fuck it. And then he was horny for girls. That's why they're all fucking female candidates now. Subaru still tried to get her to bend. He pleaded with her in an effort to get any information that he could, making sure to highlight the severity of the situation that everyone found themselves in. But no matter how much he pleaded, nothing seemed to have any effect on her. Instead, Frederica said something else that piqued Subaru's interest. Mm -hmm. A span of time that initially had zero meaning. Ten years, seven months, and thirteen days. As she goes on to explain, this was how long it had been since Frederica had left Sanctuary and become a maid for Roswell. Okay. It was also the same time that she made her vow. If she was to break that vow now, then that was essentially the same thing as breaking a promise she'd kept for over a decade. What the fuck? She made about that long ago? I thought she made this shit before coming here with Roswell. This is a decade-old vow? What the fuck? I... I'm still gonna assume that it's with Roswell and it's like a generic vow that prevents Frederica from disclosing any truth that Roswell secretly lays out in order for Frederica to be Roswell's agent. I don't know. That must have been the part of the conversation that Subaru was focused on, because he didn't even bring up the fact that Frederica had somehow made her way out of Sanctuary. How? She's a demi-human. Very good question. I thought that Russell lifted a barrier or some shit. Because a demi-human cannot leave the Sanctuary. Your soul will literally get stripped. The only way is there's some special privileges. Someone, has, someone else has fucking admin access. Instead, he continued to try to get Frederica to disregard her vow. Now, this brings us back to a cutscene that we saw from episode- Now, just because you turn into a beast form mode doesn't mean that you're a pure fucking animal, right? Because I'm thinking, is there a way that you could transform into that beast like we saw last episode and no longer- You're no longer a half-blood? I don't think that counts. You're still a fuck- You're talking. You're, you're, you are in full leopard, lion, whatever fucking mode you are, but y the- is that, that- I don't think so, right? That doesn't make sense to me. The barrier itself must have been fixed for Frederica to leave. Or Frederica was never in the fucking sanctuary. That's the only possibilities. Frederica was never in the fucking pos- in the, in the fucking sanctuary. That's why she was outside the barrier the entire time. Or someone has the admin privileges to allow Frederica to leave the barrier or tamper with the barrier to let Frederica leave. That's the only way. Or she got teleported out. That's another way, right? I don't think we've really talked about teleportations in this show, but maybe that's another way to bypass the barrier rather than just like having physical contact through so it. Too. If you remember, there was a teleportation! Crystal? Subaru got teleported. The crystal that we took off of Amelia made it seem like Subaru got teleported. Now, I don't know if it was teleportation. He grabbed that shit, he fucking forgot. Woke up in front of ruins. Was that teleportation? I don't know. Biko has some sort of passage of space and time magic, but I don't know. I don't know. These are the only possibilities I can really think of at the moment. Scene where Amelia highlighted the importance of keeping a promise, as well as Subaru's tendency to take these things lightly. As we've seen many times since, it's been a constant Ooh, recurring theme that serves scene. to showcase Subaru's difference in values. All this talk of vows, pacts, and promises has always been there to highlight this. 
So, when Frederica asked if he still wanted her to break her vow even knowing how much time she'd already spent keeping it, yes. she was shocked to hear Subaru still yes. say yes. Yes. Any other person who knew the importance of these types of promises would certainly say otherwise. Yeah, but Subaru is not from here. He doesn't know the culture or the significance of these vows. But Subaru made it brutally clear that it was something that he didn't find very important at all. He told Frederica that if that vow stood in the way of something that was truly important, then she shouldn't even hesitate to break it and toss it aside. Yeah, because to us, it seems like a frivolous little fucking promise that's getting in the way of us solving people, saving people. Rem's life, everyone else's life, your lives are in danger because of your fucking oath and the vow, whatever you made, and it's not telling us the secrets. 100%. I wouldn't give a fuck either. Fuck your decade-long vow. What do I care about that shit? I care about saving people. They're gonna die because you didn't tell me. It was the way that Subaru was so easily able to mention disregarding this 10-year vow that made Frederica become a lot more tense. Hmm. She couldn't agree with a single thing that Subaru was saying. I see. Now, this conversation- This culture diff, man. Not understanding the customs and the cultures and what people value here. Makes Subaru a very interesting character that can just like disrupt everything. It was only going in circles. So, Subaru felt the need to stare it into a new direction. That's when he decided to give Frederica the crystal. The Ooh. moment she saw that this was Garfield's, it brought forth a bit more emotion than what Subaru was expecting. Why the fuck did she give us the crystal? I still don't know completely what the crystal does. Frederica used the crystal to transform into that full beast mode, but some people are also saying it's really more of this thing stores mana and she was simply drawing the mana. It's not like this thing enables you to change into beast form mode. If we're gonna go with the mana concept, then what happened when we crossed the barrier and started to glow? This shit started to glow. Was it receiving mana from the barrier? And then did that mana then transport Subaru somewhere else? I don't know. He turned his face away to allow Frederica to wipe away her tears, all while offering a handkerchief that he just so happens to always have. A habit that had been taught to him by his mother. Ooh, mom mentioned. Now, when Rem made her entrance into the conversation, Ram. it was here that we got her thoughts on how she viewed Rem. She did in fact identify Rem to be her sister. Yep, blood related. But the fact that she was now nothing more than just an empty husk seemed to be troubling her. Rem tried to speak as if everything was normal, but Subaru could tell that she was trying to suppress how she, she truly faking felt. it. There was a certain loneliness and sadness to her voice that made it tremble, one that made Subaru feel the need to apologize. He felt that it was his fault for making her meet Rem under these circumstances. He wished that he could have found a better way to do it. But that was something that he was simply incapable of doing. Remember this last run, right? With, you know, we told Ram about Rem at this run. Like, no, I, I think that it was abrupt, but like, it still, it, it had to be done. And I think it was for the better. And now Ram is aware of Rem. It's blood related, but I don't think this shit really matters because we're probably going to reset again, right? So this run doesn't fucking matter about Rams and Rem. Ram had zero interest in Subaru's feelings of guilt, though. In her own personal way, she made it clear that she didn't blame Subaru for what happened to Rem. It was a very out-of-character display of compassion, but she didn't want Subaru to have to shoulder everything by himself. That's when you know Ram is being more serious than ever. One second. If she's preventing shitting on Subaru here and being compassionate, you know it's serious. She found it to be an insult to both Rem and her if he did. Ram then changed the subject back to the vow that Subaru was previously discussing. As we find out from the end of their argument, it turns out that Frederica actually can't break the vow of her own free will. Because Subaru was initially led her. to believe that it was solely due to her beliefs, he was very confused to hear that this was actually not the case at all. If they wanted her to talk, then they would have to force the answers out of her. So, as we saw in the anime, they figured that dragging her to Sanctuary would be the best method that would work to get those answers. And then Elsa! This meant that once Frederica got to Sanctuary, the reason for her silence plus the identity of the person trying to manipulate her would all be revealed. It was certainly a roundabout way of doing it, but getting those answers would definitely prove to be extremely helpful. So, with a plan of action figured out, all that was left to do now was get Petra, Rem, and Beatrice then leave the mansion. But that's when Elsa stepped in to make her appearance. And... Why so early? She was so early. Meaning she received instructions from Roswell to show up early because he anticipated Subaru potentially taking these people back to the sanctuary? The more I think about why Roswell might have hired Elsa is again due to the time constraint created. Now Subaru is forced to make Amelia somehow pass the trial. I don't know how we're going to do that. But it's just like, figure this shit out faster. 
or else the people at the mansion will die. This seems like what Roswell is doing to ensure we don't just fuck around forever. But is, he, is she really hired by else? You know, by Roswell? Is there something else going on? Did Anastasia do this? Anastasia's got money. No, I can't. No, I don't, I don't believe it. No way. I refuse to believe Anastasia did this. When Ram initiated the attack, she launched her Blades of Wind in a way that would avoid hitting Petra. This gave Elsa the opportunity to avoid them with quite a bit of ease. She's too good. Even though the attacks weren't visible to the naked eye, Elsa seemed to be able to read the wind itself. What the fuck, girl? This, this girl is insane. We actually get to finally see Ram use her wand. I don't know if the wand was present in Season 1. I don't remember Ram using the wand when she was using wind magic in Season 1, but it's cool to see it now. As if she could see exactly where the winds were coming from and where they were going. And she also dodged Belt's attack, which was enhanced by the blessing of the wind, you know? What the fuck is Elsa all about? Does she literally have the Sharing God? Like, what kind of blessings does she have? She must have something that prevented her from dying against Reinhardt's attack, right? There's no way she just fucking tanked it. There's gotta be something else going on with her. Her senses were clearly far superior to that of the average person. Now, after that initial encounter, we saw that upon re-entering the house that Subaru became a little bit panicked. This was because the sight that he Doors was seeing was one that he was very familiar with from the last loop. The ominous feeling that King was seeing the hallway filled with yeah. completely open doors They're reminded all him open. all too well of what happened last time. Rem, It was cool. very obvious that someone had been checking every single room. And that just made him worry more for Rem's safety. I wonder if all the doors in this mansion are open, then you will find Biku no matter what. Or... I wonder if Biku is still able to be hidden, even though all the different doors are open. But before they could get to the second floor, that's when the demon beast appeared at the other end of the hallway. The Chimera! This creature's sudden appearance now added an additional layer of complexity to the entire situation. But, what we don't- Okay, so this is the red eyes that we saw. This is the thing that fucked Subaru up outside a mansion before us being thrown into it. So if we now assume that like, there- We got a question, why is the Maju here, right? What can control Majus? I remember the bald dog shaman, but the bald dog shaman is no longer alive. Which means that something connected to it, just like the girl that's missing in Arc 2, must be the missing link. Elsa also mentions the name Meili at the end. So I can only guess that it is the purple haired girl that destroyed the barriers, that brought the bald dog to us every time. She is the one behind this. It didn't make sense for a demon beast such as this one to have wandered all the way from the forest to the mansion. Like, the only way that I can assume that is if Subaru's witch's miasma is so thick right now that this thing was drawn to it. But why is there no other Majus, right? Why is it only just this chimera and a bunch of bats around it? It seems way too specific. The only plausible explanation for its presence was that someone had ordered it to attack here. The thing is, the only way a person could command a demon beast was if they broke their horn. Yes. One more time. To attack here. The thing is, the only way a person could command a demon beast was if they broke their horn. And that ball dog didn't have a horn. And my guess of the ball dog being able to control the shaman, sorry, the shaman dog controlling. It was actually melee controlling the shaman dog to control the Majus, right? That's the only explanation, because that bald shaman dog did not have a horn, yet it was controlling the beast, and I'm like, well shit, the bald shaman dog's not here. Hold the fuck up. It never had to be the bald dog, because that bald dog was horn broken, most likely by melee. That makes sense. You see, every demon beast has a horn growing from its head. Yeah. And if someone manages to break that horn, then the demon beast will learn to obey that person. How am I able to predict so much stuff about the plot? I feel dumb. Because when you watch the anime, you don't watch it like me. When you guys watch anime, you're just sitting back and passively letting information slide by. I am pausing every like three seconds to analyze what's happening and engaging with chat to confirm my suspicions. Of course I'm going to be able to figure out more shit. You're not even trying. Most of you guys aren't even trying because you're just trying to enjoy the show. It's different for me. Like, I am doing this shit live and analyzing every single moment and getting cut content information to improve the theories and the guesses, right? I can, like, it makes a lot of sense why I can do this. If you tried, if you actively fucking tried like me too, you could pick up on these details. But, you know, when you guys watch, you're just passively absorbing the content, not like me. Person. 
that was an undeniable truth for every single demon beast. So it- If we broke off the horn of the white whale, could we control it? Yo, this- Who knows of this lore? Is this like Maju hornbreak lore common thing or does no one know about it? Because I feel like this is so crazy. Like, break the horn and they listen to you? White whale, cut that shit horn off and it could have been our whale? How does that shit work, bro? Would have been the most reasonable explanation for this current situation. But this be- Break off this thing's horns! Well, I think this thing has two horns. This beast had neither of its horns broken, which only added to the mystery of how it managed to get here at the same time as Elsa. Hmm. Oh. Right, Melee was able to control- Assuming Melee is the purple-haired girl, she was able to control the bald dog because the bald dog's bald spot was the lack of horns, but this thing does have horns, so hold the fuck up. I, I don't know any more. It was in this moment that Ram came to some sort of realization. After putting thought into how the beast's appearance could have been possible, Ram reacted as if she had figured out the answer. Now, this could be something covered in a later episode. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So, if you don't want to hear who the potential culprit could be, then feel free- Okay. Well. I think we're going to end it there for now. I, I don't want to know, but I think it is most likely Melee. I just don't get how that purple hair girl, if she is Melee, how she's controlling the Chimera, because the Chimera doesn't have the horns broken off. And the bald dog, the bald spot was the horn broken off. That, that is a logical inconsistency, but I don't want to be spoiled for that shit. I'd rather be surprised later on, but that's the episode. What is the most important shit? Mm. Puck being gone is fucking weird. I don't know if that has to do with the vow or the oath of Echidnas. Oto just AFK is kind of odd. They must be saving him for something huge later on. This part? Very interesting. Roswell was pissed off that Wilhelm was the one that killed the whale. Does that imply... And, and Wilhelm is the one that knows Roswell's ancestor, not the other way around. But maybe there's always been trouble between the Von Astrias and the Mathers family in Lugunica. Therefore, Wilhelm getting this one over Mathers is somehow a bad look. Maybe that's why Roswell's upset. Maybe it's a personal vendetta, but they've never met. I don't know. Or maybe he wanted Subaru to take complete claim rather than Wilhelm. And therefore, we're not getting enough credits for Emilia's camp. I'm not sure. But this part, let's, let's definitely keep in mind of that for the future when Roswell delivers more secrets of himself. Um, the Vow stuff, it's just fucking annoying. It's most likely Roswell. Ram? Rem? I think that Ram... I, I hope that Ram takes care of Rem better. Like, he, she was being kind of mean last episode, but it was more of like... It was an objective, correct decision to make to sacrifice her, and if Rem was also here, then we would, you know... <laughs> She would say, leave me behind. Thank God Petra and Frederica just vetoed that shit and we went back in. Elsa? I don't know what's going on with Elsa, bro. She just... Her battle senses... She gotta have a couple blessings. She gotta have fucking divine protections. How does she fucking dodge this wind magic other than battle sense as well as felt, you know, blessing of the wind attack in episode one? Maybe it's combat senses, but like Reinhardt's attack? Nah. There's gotta be something else going on with Reinhardt's attack. There is no way Elsa just tanks it because she has high HP. There has to be something special about her that we don't know just yet, but we'll find that out with due time. And that's it from me. Please go to Mr. Any News' channel. Give him a like. Sub to his channel if you haven't. There's a link. And I'll see you next time.